talk about is uh, based on a joint work with uh, Francisco Nicolas. <coughs> so there are two two themes. One is uh, the study of Keller groups, and one is the study of finiteness properties of groups. So I will uh, first uh, introduce a bit each of these two themes. So finiteness properties of groups. So the um, okay, the finiteness properties. There are many finiteness properties of groups. So the one I want to talk about are the uh, have been introduced by Wall, CTC Wall. So take a group G, and um, and some integer n, and I will say that G is of type F n. If there is uh, a CW complex, say X, which is a classifying spec for G. So this means that its fundamental group is isomorphic to G and its higher homotopy group are trivial, and such that the n skeleton of X is finite. Okay, so there are finitely many cells in each dimension up to n. So, for instance, if you have um, if you have any CW complex Y, with fundamental group isomorphic to G, you can always build a, a classifying space by adding cells to Y to kill the, the higher homotopy group. So you can build a KG1 by adding cells of dimension while well starting in dimension 3. Y. Okay, so for instance, the pro property F2 it's equivalent to being finitely presented. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you are finitely presented, you can you have a, you take a finite presentation of G, you can build a presentation complex. And now you can add cells of dimension 3 and then 4, etc., to kill all homotopy groups. And you will get uh, maybe a very complicated CW complex, but its two skeleton will be finite. And G is F1 if and only if it's finitely generated. Okay, so um, to the other finiteness properties in the literature, but I will only mention uh, these ones for the moment. So a uh, recurring theme is to try to build examples of groups which uh, violate these properties. For example, groups which are of type Fn minus 1 and not of, of type Fn. Yeah, and something, something that I... Okay, something obvious maybe that I should say. So of course if G is a, is a pi 1 of a, say, a closed aspherical manifold, or... Uh, or uh, an aspherical finite complex. Then it is Fn for all n. Okay. So, okay, so I will recall a classical construction of uh, groups which violate some of these properties. And then the aim is to explain why uh, example of those groups which are, say, Fn minus 1 but not Fn for some n occur in, uh, in complex geometry. Okay. And actually, uh, there are examples like this which are Keller groups. So, 
a short list, not, uh, not exhaustive. So far, there is a classical work of Wormslag and Roseblade, which classify, well, which study subgroups of a uh, direct product of two free groups. And they, they prove that um, a finitely presented subgroup in a direct product of two free groups like this, it's either virtually a free group or virtually a direct product of two free groups. So now if you have any, any subgroups here which for which you can easily ch check that it's not free or not, not virtually free or not virtually a direct product of two free groups, then you know it's not finitely presented. Okay, so you, you can, in this way you can uh, build many examples of non-finitely presented subgroups in this direct product. So there's a classical example of Stallings. I think it's actually before, it must be in the 60s. Of, uh, of an example of a group G, which is finitely presented and with a three-dimensional homology group, which is not uh, finitely generated. Okay, if, if you have a group G which is of type Fn, so you have a classifying space for G which has a finite n skeletons, and if you compute it's the homology of the group G, so it's the homology of the CW complex, up to dimension n it will be finitely generated because, because the CW complex has finitely many cells in all dimensions up to n. So if you have a, a homology group in a certain dimension which is not finitely generated, it means that you cannot be Fn for this value of n. And other, other classical works on, on this topic, there's the work of uh, Bestvina and Brady, so I will come back to it a bit later. So they studied uh, finiteness properties of subgroups of right angle Artin groups using a combinatorial Morse theory, so maybe I, I, I will say more precisely what they did uh, a bit later. So, And uh, another work is the work of uh, Brightson, Owe, Miller and Short. And they studied subgroups in direct product of surface groups. So here, surface groups means fundamental groups of uh, any surface of finite type, say oriented. So there are either free groups or fundamental groups of closed surface. And uh, what they proved um, is that, uh, maybe I'll write the statement. They proved that if you have an H in a direct product of N finitely generated surface groups, like this, and if it's of type Fn, well, you need a little bit less, but uh, since I'm working with property Fn, uh, I will state it like this. So if you have an H like this, then H is virtually a direct product. of K surface group, where K is at most n. Okay, so you take a direct product of n surface group, you pick any subgroup of this. If it is Fn, it must be itself virtually a direct product of K surface group for some K at most equal to n. So now, uh, so, so you can use this also to show that there are plenty of uh, subgroup of these direct products which are not of type Fn. Okay? Any groups for which you can check that it's not of this form, then it will not be of type Fn. Okay, so um, now what about Keller groups? So what is a Keller group? So, or what is a Keller manifold, maybe first? So a Keller manifold 
just <laughs> to give the definition once. So it's a closed, man so it's a complex manifold with a metric which is compatible with the complex structure in some sense. So with a Hermitian metric, when you have a Hermitian metric on a complex manifold, its imaginary part is a two form, and you want this two form to be closed. Okay. So I will not uh, really say more about it. So okay, examples include all uh, projective varieties, so all submanifold of a complex projective space. And uh, there are many restrictions on the topology of uh, closed Keller manifolds, and in particular on the fundamental groups. fundamental groups. Okay, and what is a Keller group? It's a group which uh, can be realized as a fundamental group of a closed Keller manifold. So there are many, many restrictions on this class of groups, and um, while well notably Gromov and Thomas uh, imported ideas from uh, geometric group theory in these topics, for instance the use of the ends and relative ends or the BNS invariant in the work of Thomas, for instance. So there are many, re many restrictions and also one, um, but there are also, well there's also a rich family of examples, even if it's quite, uh, quite difficult to, to build examples of Keller groups with uh, new properties. And uh, okay, so what I want to, to mention in this talk is how to build uh, examples of Keller groups with uh, exotic finiteness properties. Okay, and when I say that a group has exotic finiteness properties, I mean that it's, say, it's not Fn for certain integer n. And most of the time, uh, we'll be able to check that a group is not Fn by just proving that its n-dimensional homology is not finitely generated. OK, so before uh, talking about these examples of Keller groups, so this all this started with a question of Collar in the 90s. Well, it's in a book published in the 90s. So the, the answer will be negative, <laughs> right? I'm spoiling. You know. So maybe after 30 years later, the, the question can look naive. I don't know, but I was not in the topic in the 90s. So he asked, he said, OK, take a projective uh, variety. and uh, consider its fundamental group. So if x is a spherical, then x is a classifying space for its pi 1. And now what he, what he was asking is that if x is not a spherical, can you find a, a nice classifying space for the fundamental group, say a classifying space which has something to do with complex geometry? For so another projective variety with the same pi 1, but which is a spherical, or a quasi-projective variety with uh, the same pi 1, but which is a spherical. 
Okay, so the question was like this. If uh, x is not a spherical, I mean, it's a bit uh, an informal question. <coughs> Can we find a nice k pi 1 x 1 uh, in terms of uh, algebraic or complex geometry? So it was, it was known at the time that you cannot always take uh, a projective variety because if you have a projective variety which is a spherical, so this means that, uh, well, uh, projective variety is a complex variety, so it's even dimensional. So it implies that pi 1 has even cohomological dimension. And there are examples of Keller groups with uh, odd uh, cohomological dimension. So if you take uh, a, a lattice gamma in PUN1, which is non-uniform and torsion-free, and if n is at least equal to 3, then uh, Toledo proved that uh, gamma is, is scalar, so actually it's pi 1 over of a smooth projective variety. And, um, and gamma has odd cohomological dimensions. So you cannot you cannot find a classifying space for this gamma, which is a projective variety, but maybe you can find one which is a quasi-projective variety. So this was uh, the question of Collard. But now, if uh, so if the answer was positive, if, if you have a quasi-projective variety, it always has, uh, even if it's an open manifold, it's, it's defined by polynomial equation, you can always prove that it has the homotopy type of a finite complex. So if, you, uh, if it was true, that for any pi 1 of a projective manifold, you could build a kg1, which was quasi-projective. This would mean that any pi 1 of a projective manifold would have a finite classifying space. OK? And uh, so s what we'll see is that there are, there are projective groups we, which have no finite classifying space. So the, the answer turns out to be negative. OK, so the answer will be no. And the first example was built by Dimka, Papadima, and Susiu. So I will uh, explain the construction first. Um, so this was uh, in 2009, at least published in 2009. I don't know. The the data of the preprint. And then there were, OK, this work was continued by uh, Josa Eisenrich And there's also uh, an article by uh, Brightson and Josa Eisenrich on this topic. And now, OK, this, this work that we did with uh, Nicolas. OK, so wh what, is, uh, what is the construction of Dimkia, Papadema, and Susio? So basically, it's, uh, well, in their own uh, words, it's a kind of complex analog of the of the work of Besduna and Brady. So what is, uh, what is, uh, first let me recall what is uh, the work of Besduna and Brady. So take a right angle artin group. So what is this? So you take a finite graph. Uh, okay, gamma will be a graph. 
for, for a few minutes. And what is the associated right angle artin group? It's a group where you put one generator for each vertex of the graph. So the set of generators is the set of vertices of the graph. And the set of relation, well, the, you put a relation whenever you have two generators, G, V, say, and GW, which correspond to the vertices V and W. If V and W are adjacent, you declare that G, V, and GW commute. OK. So whenever, so, so the set of generator is the set of vertices of the of your finite graph. And uh, whenever two vertices are adjacent, you declare that the corresponding generator commute. And uh, you have a homomorphism from A of gamma to Z. Well, you have many. But you can consider the homomorphism which maps all generators to one. And the work of uh, Bezdin and Brady is consists in studying the finiteness properties of the kernel of this homomorphism. And it's a uh, combinatorial Morse theory, okay? A of gamma, it acts on a 4-0 cubical complex. So, or A of gamma, you can see it as a fundamental group of a finite complex, a cubical complex. This homomorphism to Z, you can realize it as a map to the circle. And they look at the properties of this map on the, well, they look at the covering space corresponding to the kernel of this homomorphism. And, and they do some more theory here to study the, the finiteness property. So I will, I will do something very similar soon, so I will not really say more for the moment. Okay, so what is the construction of uh, Dimka, Papadima, and Susu? So I will abbreviate this as DPS. So they, they take uh, an elliptic curve or a Riemann surface of genus 1. OK, so C modulo uh, a lattice. And they consider finitely many um, Riemann surfaces, which are all branch covering of E. OK? So I consider sigma i, where i goes from 1 to r. And uh, which is a ramified covering of E. So I assume that it's really truly ramified. So the genus is uh, at least two. And now I can consider the map from the product of this sigma i to E, which is just the sum of the pi. Okay, since E, I view E as a C mod uh, lambda, so I can think of it as an abelian group and I can do the sum. And, uh, okay, so I assume, I've already said it, I assume that uh, sigma i has genus at least two. I will assume that f is on two at the level of pi one. And also that there are at least three factors. Okay, and what, what do they prove? Uh, Dimka Papadim and Susu. Well, the first thing is that I will call Y T the, the pre image of T. If T is a point of E, then Y T will be the inverse image of T. So, what they prove is that first that pi 1 of Y T embeds in, uh, in the product of the pi 1 of the sigma i and coincides with uh, the kernel of F star. And second thing, the homology in dimension R of, y t of this group is uh, infinite dimensional. Let's say the homology with a Q coefficient. The number of factor. So, so I, I have a direct product of R Riemann surfaces, which maps to an elliptic curve. So they're all ramified cover of the same elliptic curve. So, so this map, it has, it has critical points, okay, because uh, the covering spaces are ramified. But 
So this I will the first uh, point of the theorem. It's I will explain why it's true later. So it's uh, it's not really related to the fact that we have a direct product of surface group. It or it holds in a more, more general context. Um, I mean, well, we will see that both <laughs> both thing holds in a more general context. But the first one was already known to to Dim Kappa Pedim and Susu. So. Even if there are cr critical points, the fiber yt is pi 1 embedded, it's pi 1, it coincides with the kernel of f star, and the r dimensional homology of the pi 1 is, uh, is infinite dimensional. Okay, so how do, do you prove this? So the first point, you, this is uh, essentially complex Morse theory. I will, I will go back to it a bit later. For the second point, the proof of Dimka Papadiman Susu, it has nothing to do with complex geometry. Basically, the study the finiteness properties of any co abelian subgroup of a direct product of surface group. And, and the method has nothing to do with complex geometry. I will not say anything about it. But also, you could deduce this second point from the method of Brightson or Wee Miller Short also. Okay, so I want to mention at least two, two more two more results before stating ha our results. So after this work, so Josa Eisenrich pushed uh, pushed this further, and he built more example of Keller groups with uh, exotic finiteness properties. Okay, so of course this I didn't say it, but this YT it's. Uh, it's a complex submanifold of a, of a Keller manifold, so it's pi one is a Keller group. So one thing that uh, Josa Eisenrich did here is one theorem. So here, observe that the the dimension where the finiteness property fails, it's exactly the number of factors. And what Josa Eisenrich did is to show that you can also uh, Inside the direct product of R surface group, you can also find Keller subgroups with finiteness properties, uh, we'll say which are not K for a K which is distinct from R. So for any for any R, I will state it like this, and for any genus, you can find a subgroup H in a direct product of closed surfaces of genus GI, which is Keller, which is, uh, I will not write it, which is uh, an irreducible full subdirect product. So it means really that you cannot, you cannot embed it in a smaller direct product in some sense. And which is, if you take any integer m between 2 and r minus 1, you can find such a Keller group which is of type F M minus one, but not of type F M. Uh, yes, no, of type F M, but not of type F M plus one. Okay. So in the theorem of Dimka Papadim Susu, the group pi one of Yt it's of type F R minus one. So I will explain it later. Any questions? Maybe no. And for me, in, in what I will say, what I will remember is that this dimension where the Finiteness property fails. You could say that it's a uh, number of factors, but you can also say that it's a uh, complex dimension of the ambient manifold you start with. Okay, this direct product of Riemann surfaces is of, it's of complex dimension R. And just one more comment about the history. So there is a, a work of Kapovich, which actually is older than everything else <laughs> I've said about Keller groups. 
And uh, it's also about finiteness properties, but it's in complex dimension too. It's an unpublished paper. So Kapovich, he was considering an aspherical surface, so complex surface. Uh, Keller even, but I think it's not really needed. And he was considering a holomorphic map to a Riemann surface of positive genus. So P is holomorphic and say has connected fibers. And what he proved is that, uh, well, okay, if P is a submersion, then it's a submersion, you are happy. And if not, if, the, if there is a critical point, at least one critical point, then uh, the kernel of P star is not finitely presented. So this is what he proved, but actually I think you can, uh, you could prove that H2 of the group is not finitely generated. Okay, so it's very, it's, well, it's older than the work of Dimka, Papadim, and Susu, but it's really the same uh, ideas. Uh, the only reason I, I didn't mention it at the beginning is that here you, the kernel that you get, it's, not finitely presented. So in particular, it's not a Keller group. Since a Keller group, by definition, it's by one of a closed manifold. So it's finitely presented. And he used this. He was interested in the coherence of lattices in Lie groups. So there are several examples of surfaces where you can uh, apply the theorem. And he used this to give example of lattices in PU21, which are not coherent. OK, so this was his motivation. Okay, so now So I said that the proof of uh, Dimka Papadim and Susu was about uh, the technique was about any co-abelian subgroup of a direct product of surface groups. So now what I want to explain is that the theorem that I just erased, it will, uh, it will still hold if you consider any aspherical manifold, complex manifold, instead of a direct product of Riemann surface. Except that here we'll really use that we have a, we'll really look at the kernel at the level of pi 1, we'll really look at the kernel of a homomorphism induced by some holomorphic map. We'll not say something about uh, arbitrary subgroups. And we'll need uh, one hypothesis about this holomorphic map. So we'll need it to have finitely many critical points. Okay, when you have, uh, I'll just rewrite something I erased. When you have a direct product of Riemann surfaces like this, sigma 1 times sigma 2 times sigma r, and you have a, a map to an elliptic curve, which is the sum of R maps. So locally, it's just the sum of F1 of Z1 plus F2 of Z2 plus Fr of Zr. So uh, point Z1, Zr is a critical point of this map, if and only if each Zi is a critical point of Fi. So the critical set on s of, of the map Fpi uh, on sigma e, it's a finite set. So here's a critical set. It will be the product of the critical set of e each of the ramified covers. So it's finite. And now this is the only thing I want to remember, that the map with the finitely many critical points. So take x. So now take x to be a closed complex manifold. You don't need it to be Keller for the moment. Take a holomorphic map to a Riemann surface of positive genus. Uh, 
so with connected fibers. And uh, assume that its critical set is finite. Okay, and uh, the theorem is that uh, so the thing we observed with uh, Nicolas. So if n, if you call n the complex dimension of x, and I, I will also I need one more notation. I will call x hat the covering space of x which correspond to the kernel of uh, P star. So in particular, okay, so, so it's the covering space corresponding to the kernel of P star. And the observation is that if n is the complex dimension of x, then the homology of x hat in dimension n let's say with q coefficient, is uh, infinite dimensional. Okay? So this is, uh, we'll see that this is quite, uh, the proof is uh, quite easy. And the consequence is that if now you assume that x is aspherical, Sorry, the set of critical points. Yeah, yeah. It's finite and non, non empty. Ah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So I if, uh, if there are no critical points and uh, this map P from X to sigma, it's a fiber bundle. So the, um, yes, yeah, so the covering space x hat, it will just be a fiber bundle above the universal cover of uh, sigma. So also the genus of sigma is uh, at least one. This is implicit. So if there is no critical point, the x hat, it's a fiber bundle of uh, something which is topologically a plane. So it has the homotopy type of a fiber, which is compact. So the homology is uh, finitely generated, but if there is at least one critical point, then this homology group is infinite dimensional. And the corollary is that if x is aspherical, so if moreover x is aspherical, well then the, the homology of the kernel of P star is infinite dimensional in degree n. Why? Because the x hat will be a classifying space for, for this group. And actually, this kernel is uh, f n minus 1, not f n. So not f n follows from this homological affirmation and fn minus 1 uh, will follow from uh, what I will say soon. <laughs> but the fact that it's fn minus 1 is not uh, not uh, not original. I mean, it was already known to dim kappa by dimon sociu. Okay? So, okay, let me explain uh, quickly the proof. So for the proof, I will assume that, uh, if you allow me, I will assume that P is a Morse function, holomorphic Morse function, but the proof in general is the same. Okay, so this means that in, uh, 
all its critical points are non-degenerate. So near each critical point, you can find complex coordinates, z1, zn, such that the map is uh, locally like z1, zn goes to z1 squared plus z2 squared plus zn squared. And if, if you have a, a map with uh, isolated critical points, so near, uh, in a chart, in a, si in a singularity, you can always add a complex linear form to make it uh, non-degenerate. So, so in general, if, you, if, you, if this is your original manifold, you have finitely many critical points. You can always perturb it near the critical points to make it non-degenerate. And you can do a C infinity perturbation to glue this perturbation to the map outside some small balls. And you will get something which is uh, not holomorphic on, in a small uh, annuli around the critical point. But what is important is that it's holomorphic. So you have a model near the critical points, so the same thing will, will work. Okay, and uh, so you take, uh, well, here's the proof. I will call sigma hat the universal cover of sigma. So it's either the unit disk or the complex plane. And I will start with a, um, a smooth fiber. And I want to understand how this x hat is built from this fiber. How, what, what is the change in topology? So, so I, have, I have infinitely many critical values. Okay, because the sigma hat is non-compact. So I'll just draw some circles, some disks in, in the plane, in such a way that when I pass from one disk to the next disk, I, get, I only have one new critical value. Okay. And I will call, uh, I will call xk the pre-image of the disk number k. So for instance, if I take a very small disk, I only have a regular value. So the x1, say it's just, it uh, retracts onto a smooth fiber. And what happens when you pass from uh, xk to xk plus 1? Let's say that there is only one critical point above, uh, this is xk, this is xk plus 1. I will assume that there is only one critical point here above. If there are several, it, it doesn't matter. So the Lefschet theory, which is a complex analog of Morse theory, tells you that xk plus 1 has the homotopy type of xk plus a cell of dimension n glued to it along a, an embedded sphere. Okay, so xk plus 1, I'll write this, this means has the homotopy type of xk union a disk of dimension n glued along a certain sphere of dimension n minus 1. Okay, in, in complex dimension 2, you have this picture. You have a cylinder which degenerates onto this cone. And, okay, and there's a, a curve in the generic fiber which will die in the near the critical point. So, a consequence of this is that if you look at the sequence of Betty numbers of xk in dimension n minus 1, this is decreasing. I mean, no, non increasing. Okay? So it will be eventually stationary. And once it's stationary, so. You, you pick uh, k naught such that starting from k naught, the sequence bn minus 1 of xk is constant. And once it's stationary, we'll see that the n, now the Betty number of dimension n, will uh, increase uh, strictly when. So now you will see that uh, bn of xk increases. And this as soon as k is greater or equal to k naught. And th this will be, uh, this will prove the theorem because the uh, hn of this x hat, it's the limit of the hn of xk. Okay, any, any cycle, homological cycle, it has compact support, so it's contained in one of the xk. 
And uh, if a cycle is a boundary of something, this something is also contained in a compact set. So this H chain is, uh, is the limit of this H chain of XK. And what, what uh, I will explain now is that this H chain, they will inject one into its other, and, and the rank will increase strictly. So it's really infinite dimension. And the proof is like this. Uh, you so you have a vanishing sphere on the boundary of XK. You glue a disk to it to obtain the topological type of XK plus one. So this cycle in, in XK plus one, it's an N minus one dimension cycle which dies. But since the sequ this sequence of N minus one dimensional Betty number was constant, it, it must be dead already in XK. So it must be the boundary of something already here in XK. And here you see this picture on new n-dimensional cycle, which, which uh, did not exist before. Okay, so and basically, if you want to write uh, what I've said uh, properly, you just write a uh, Meyer Vietoris uh, Vietoris sequence, and this will um, give you what you want. So this number, this number, when you pass from k to k plus one, b n of x k, it will increase by the number of critical points in the fiber. Okay, very good. So now uh, the point is, uh, what about examples? Are there examples where we can apply uh, these results? So I will mention two exam some examples coming from uh, lattices in PU21. Uh, but one one question before one question is that uh, I don't know if you can build example coming from lattices in PU11, for instance. So does there exist? A map uh, as before. So this means that the critical set is finite. Sigma is a Riemann surface of positive genus, and where x is a quotient of the unit ball of Cn by a lattice in P11. So if yes, so I think it's an open problem to have uh, all, all the examples that are known of, sub of groups which are of type Fn minus 1 but not Fn. There are subgroups of cat zero groups, but it's not known. There are no examples uh, inside the hyperbolic groups. So if, if you have a map like this, it would provide an example. OK, the, the kernel of this P star would... Uh, would uh, would be a, a group which is of type Fn minus 1, but not Fn. OK, maybe w I've never really explained why all the groups involved were Fn minus 1. But because this, so this x hat, it's a classifying space. And it's obtained from the fiber, from a generic fiber of the map, just by adding cells of dimension n. So the generic fiber, the real dimension is 2n minus 2 you add cells of dimension n. So it's not really a CW complex. It's rather a relative uh, CW complex. But, but you can find a CW complex which will have the same uh, n minus 1 skeleton. Because you just start from a compact manifold of real dimension 2 n minus 2. You add cells of dimension n. OK, so I don't know the answer to this question. Uh, actu the, the I think that the existence of subgroups of hyperbolic groups which are say maybe fpn, not fpn plus 1. It also follows from a conjecture of Kilak, but it's uh, okay. a different story, so I will not talk about it. Okay, so, so now one uh, first example. So um, I will not really 
I will not give details about it. But there is a, in complex dimension two, there is an example of a lattice in, uh, there is an example of a surface, X, which is a quotient of the unit ball of C2 by a lattice in PU21. So it's compact. So it's called the cartwright stegger surface. And this uh, Euler characteristic of X is equal to 3. And its first Betty number is equal to 2. OK, and it was, uh, it was discovered uh, while uh, these people were classifying the fake projective planes. OK, a fake projective plane, it's a complex surface which has the same Betty numbers as uh, CP2, but which is not CP2. And it is known that if you have a surface like this, Necessarily, it must be a, a quotient of the ball. And so there are a finite list of surfaces like this. They, they have a layer characteristic 3. And while uh, classifying this thing, these people discovered a, a lattice, gamma, such that well, the quotient has a layer characteristic 3, but the B1 is 2, so it's not a fake CP2. But it's an example uh, I want to use. And uh, so Cartwright. Koziars and Young proved that well, on the one hand, Cartwright, Koziars, Young, and I think in independently Rito, they proved that the Albanese map of the thing that I did not define has finitely many critical points. So what, what does this mean? So you have the pi 1 of x. Its abelianization modulo torsion is isomorphic to Z2 because the Betsy number is equal to 2. And for any compact Keller manifold, this map from pi 1 of x to the abelianization modulo torsion, you can realize it by a holomorphic map to a complex torus. So here, the complex torus will be a, an elliptic curve. And what they proved is that the, the, set of, the critical set of A is finite. So this gives, uh, only in dimension 2, uh, an example of a map which satisfies the condition of, uh, of the previous theorem. And now you can consider, do a bit as a uh, dim cap of Adiman Soucieux, you can consider the direct product of k times this surface. And you can do the sum. It gives you a holomorphic map to E. And exactly as before, the critical points of this map, it's just a product of the critical points. So the critical set is finite. So if f is um, is this map, if you apply our previous theorem, you get that the kernel of uh, f star has infinite dimensional homology. So this time, remember that in, in my context, what is important is not the number of factor, but the complex dimension of the original manifold. So here, the H2K is infinite dimensional. So actually, uh, when you build uh, groups with exotic finiteness properties like this, you can consider the, the N uh, for which Fn fails. And you can consider also the maximal rank of the abelian subgroups uh, that the group contains. And here, in, in many examples, it's, uh, it's the same or maybe shifted by one. And here it will be, well, it will be a fraction. It will be one half. Th there is an example of a uh, cropolar where it's also a fraction, like one third or something. And. Uh, OK, I well just want to mention one final thing. So you one, uh, OK, two more comments. Actually, if you here this map, it's, uh, okay, it's a quotient of a product of balls. So you could get a, a different proof of how a result using a, a theorem of uh, Gaborio on L2 Betty numbers. But it's really because you have a uh, locally symmetric varieties and because this is uh, of genus one, the theorem 
that we proved. Uh, in general, you, you cannot deduce it really, I think, from uh, something on L2 Betty numbers. And there is um, uh, another thing which was actually a, a suggestion of Thomas is now what about uh, how, how could you build more examples? So, for instance, there is a uh, okay, the suggestion of Thomas was what about if you have a, a holomorphic map from say x1, a complex manifold to a Riemann surface sigma, and another holomorphic map x2 to sigma, and uh, now you do not assume that sigma has genus 1, so you cannot do the sum of these two maps, but you can do a fiber product, okay, you can look at the pairs x1, x2, such that uh, p1 of x1 equals p2 of x2. So if, uh, if the critical values of p1 and p2, the z, if they are distinct, the z is smooth. And it's not very difficult to, to, to prove that the z will have the same, uh, let's say that x1 and x2 are, are spherical, and that these things have uh, critical points, and the z, the pi 1 of the z will have infinite dimensional homology in rank n. Now what about examples? So the only example I know where you can apply this is that there, is a, there are examples uh, built by Livne of quotient of the ball, again in dimension 2, with holomorphic map uh, to, to Riemann surfaces of genus at least 2, with finite critical set. And of course, uh, if you want this to be smooth, as I said, you want the critical values of these two maps to be disjoint, so you cannot use uh, twice the same the same manifold. So the only thing I imagine for the moment for which you can apply this is to consider a Riemann surface here, uh, sigma prime, a ramified cover with the critical values distinct disjoint from that of P. So this would produce groups inside the direct product of a surface group times gamma, which will be in Keller groups and with uh, infinite dimensional H3. So this is another another source of examples, but I don't really, yeah, it would be nice to have even more construction. So happy birthday, Thomas, and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thus, we have questions. Uh, we have uh, online questions. <laughs> 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 I'm not seeing any questions in the chat either. <laughs> 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 um, well, if we don't have questions, maybe we can have a break. And we resume at uh, uh, 3.30. Thank you.